Joe Samantha with First Updates now here with Team 16 917 Gear Wizards. We're here at the Minnesota State Championship. They've got this amazingly efficient robot, snappy extending intake, efficient at placing pixels and making mosaics. Um, let's hear more about it coming up here on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, Skylar, tell me about some of your first designs. I know you've gone through some iterations, so let's show them off. Yeah, so at first we started with a ramp intake, and then we realized that it wasn't as efficient as when we used the roller intake. So we switched from a ramp to a roller to... Uh, match our deposits better better so our ramp intakes would match with our one deposit one pixel deposit and then our uh, big intake down here would match with our flat square and round deposits to just smack up up smack them up against the uh, backdrop but then we realized that wasn't as efficient so we switched to a claw intake and a claw deposit so that we can have a faster deposit and intake time. All right, Simon, so we've seen some of the iterations now. Show us how the final robot's working. So starting off, uh, after our second qualifier, we decided that our bucket and roller intake was not going to make it uh, if we wanted to have a shot at advancing. So what we changed to was this extending uh, claw intake. So this is a virtual four bar with two servos for each one. So we can grab single cell or two cell for autonomous. And so when we grab it, we'd go in and then we can transfer it into our second claw and it'll drop it into that second set for autonomous. And so in autonomous, we have these indents inside of our claw arms so that when we're depositing an autonomous, we can deposit single cell one at a time using uh, interesting geometry of the claw. So the more it opens, the easier it is to d deposit one at a time. That's looking snappy. Um, Carter, take us through some of your engineering design process. So our engineering design process has six steps, identify, explore, uh, design, build, test, and improve. For the first step, what we do is we have to figure out the problem. So we'll do a team meeting, and what we made was a SWOT analysis, which is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, which we used to determine what we wanted our game strategy to be. And then explore is when we connect with professional connections, such as FTC alumni and engineering professionals in our area. And then we design it in Fusion 360 using uh, math and different drawings that we have and then we build it most of what we do is machined or 3d printed so um, this right here is custom machine out of acetyl and then all of the um, light purple you see here is 3d printed we also have custom machine cnc side plates and then the next thing we do is we test it so what we'll do is how we determine that the claw was more efficient than the roller intake is we compared the claw to the roller intake and accuracy using pre-programmed positions. And then for improve, we basically make slight adjustments to make it even better. So like making this slightly smaller and changing the rubber band positions just a little bit in order to improve airplane accuracy. So tell me about your climber and drone. So we decided to incorporate our uh, hang into our main deposit system, allowing us to condense the amount of motors we needed. So what we did was we made these little indents here. So we'd hang off this, and then we have extension and retraction springs to pull it down. Our drone launcher is um, officially the smallest drone launcher in Minnesota. So it's about this big by this tall. And we made it as small as possible to fit it on the side of the robot. And it is um, just a standard drone design that you'd make you know, in a class. Um, and we scaled it down to four by cutting it in fourths. And that allows us to get dead on accuracy with super good reliability. All right, well now we see the mechanical side. So Cohen, tell us about the software that runs this robot. So for autonomous, we use PID loops in order to get where the motors are. And we use the camera to know where the custom element is, which allows us to score an extra 
20 points during autonomous. The main challenge this year of coding was going from block to Java because our previous coder left, so we had to learn how to code this year and over the summer. It's pretty interesting to learn, kind of difficult. We also used odometry through Roadrunner, which you can't use in blocks because you have to have different libraries. All right, well, that's looking like an amazing robot. Thank you for taking the time to interview. Good luck today, and shout out to Skylar and Carter for your Dean's List nominations. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.